Uh, okay, so if you you can open up this screen now, you can see the so there's some preliminary matters for me to discuss. I put up a form. Uh, I just want to collect some some of your feedback. So if you just uh, go and click the form, and I have a Facebook page which is currently quite empty, but uh, I would like you to follow the page for future announcements whenever we have this uh, similar type of workshop in the future, which I think I will have. Okay. So uh, let's set up, let's set the ob objectives. Uh, to be clear, what we're going to do is that we're going to run a software library called TensorFlow Keras. Okay, and this is being hosted in Collab, hosted by Google themselves. So we, we're just going to go through the instructions on how to run this. Uh, so we then we, you will learn to see. So I've collected some data data sets, um, so two, two data sets plus maybe some of your own. And then we're going to see how the training data influences the results. And at the end of it, you will also understand, hopefully, what are models uh, in, in the context of Keras or in the context of deep learning. Okay, so, and in order to set the expectations, we're not going to teach coding here. So you will be given the code. So this, this uh, worksheet has all the code there, but if, uh, for, for this session, we won't learn how to code the, the whole thing, but you can see the code and if you understand them or you can refer them later on to some other references or whatever, you can modify the code, okay? So this will not be a lecture because it's too, too short to be a lecture. So I hope there will be more of a discussion just to fill up the gaps in your, in your understanding uh, in a very conceptual and intuitive man manner. So we, we're not going to talk about mathematics. We, we're not going to talk about what Conclusion is except at a conceptual level. Uh, hopefully, that you have a have a have a good grasp of uh, what this program is trying to do. Now, okay, so I, and also do not expect the result from this to be super excellent or whatever. So because this code is a very short code, only. But given that, I think it is in a sense surprising that it can do such thing. Given just you know, a handful, it's not maybe not even a it's just 200 lines, okay? And most of the 200 lines are just preparing the data itself. Uh, so this is a small model. You should not expect it to work exceptionally well. And this model or this algorithm came from research a few years ago, like five, six years ago. At that, at that time, maybe it was state of the art. Somebody introduced something new because uh, when we do colorization, we, we don't do it in this way until five, six years ago. Okay, and if you have an intuitive understanding, you can actually improve the model. So for playing around, we have tried a couple of models here and there and see, but I've given you this, the simpler ones that work fairly okay. Um, so I hope that you gain some understanding now of what the limitations and what is, what is uh, the limitations of deep learning and what deep learning can do. There are many things you can do. This one aspect of it. So one aspect that's more interesting now. Okay, you can do many things. You can do object detection, object recognition, segmentation. You can uh, you can do art and stuff like that. Okay, so so we just look at one aspect of it. There's still a lot of things that we can improve on. Okay, so in order to run this, you will need to have a data set. Now. So so I have prepared. Two data sets. One is a landscape data. So this is um, mostly um, earth and sky. Okay. So the reason why I have segmented this uh, into into a similar genre kind of photos because the, the the neural network is not capable of learning a diverse set of data. It can only learn one simple ones, one on similar type. Okay. So if you try to feed it uh, too much diverse, you want to put in all the types of photos in the world, for you to learn, you will need a very big model. You will need a very big um, neural network. So we don't have this capability, so we restrict the data. So that's in one sense, you can see that the data constraints uh, what you can do with your neural network. Okay, if, if you have a lot of diverse Im images, then you need a very big model. So I have two different types of data that I, I prepared. So the one is a landscape data. 
The other one is the fire extinguisher data. This was actually prepared uh, by another participant in the previous workshop. So I just want to try out this. Okay, so so um, so the data itself is uh, partitioned into two sets. One is the data set. The data set dot zip uh, is the data set that is used to train the neural network. Okay, or to train the model. So different models means different algorithm. And right now, the software is such that you can create different models quite easily. All these deep learning uh, models are like Lego sets now. You can add in one layer, add in another layer, change them, swap them. So you, you can have a multitude of ways to modify the model because they're all very simple now. So one thing with working with multiple participants is that if after this session, you can go home and try to modify it, right? And if you keep contact with me, I can continue to assist you right, in this sense, okay? And I'm also interested to know what changes that you make, that you can make. And when you make those changes, what are the results? So it's a sort of a collaborative learning for me as well. So I'm just trying to harness, the one reason why I'm trying, I'm giving, I'm working on this free workshop is to try, trying to harness you people to do some work for me as well. So that you run the data set and then you show me what's the result. So I have, so that I, instead of me doing it, all the work, you run your own data set and then you share with everybody. Then we can have an understanding of whether this model, how good this model and what are the weaknesses, okay? So I'm just trying to harness it in both ways, uh, okay? We, we help each other in both ways, okay? Okay, so, so the, there's one, so the data set, dot zip is a training data. The test dot zip is the test data. So this test data are mutually exclusive, right? They are not the same. None of the photos in the test dot zip is in the data set dot zip or in the training. So, so that uh, we, we know that it is learning to apply on something else, okay? So they are separate. The test and the training data, they are they're separate. So while listening to me talk, you should download one set of them first. Okay, they all will zip unzip to the same folder so that we don't have to change the coding now, but you overwrite the, uh, the, the, the data, okay, on, on the folder you should. So you should download one set first, uh, say landscape data, download it to your hard disk, okay? Later in the, when we run the code, you will upload it back to Colab. Okay, so download the test.zip and the data set, data set.zip. Okay, so um, anybody has any, issue maybe you just uh, highlight it out if you have problem downloading the uh, sorry downloading the uh, data set okay so while you're downloading uh, there's a very simple instructions to be given here hope you can see my screen here so presumably you have i'm not sure yeah, i've shared the the thing ready so you already are able to see the worksheet and the worksheet is 1.1b uh, okay so make sure that you got the 1.1b so uh okay so if you see the interface so there is a you can see the interface one two and three the steps okay so number one is go to the runtime menu select the gpu select runtime change runtime select gpu okay so we are using the graphics uh, processing unit to run. You can, of course, run with the CPU. It will just be much slower, lah, okay? That's all. So, but better to select the GPU unless it's not available. Secondly, once you selected the GPU, look, check that it is connected, okay? It's connected to the hosted runtime, not the local runtime. It's connected to the collab machine, okay? Then, in general, the worksheet, uh, for those who are already work with the Jupyter Nobu will know this is exactly the same thing, but it's hosted online. You can see the, the triangle there. This triangle is for running the code. Okay, the, the code runs in the cell one by one. Every cell you 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 run, you click the run button and you run that cell alone only. Okay. So uh, so having given this pre preliminary, so okay, so maybe sometimes the code get hanged. Right, or the runtime is disconnected. So what you need to do is to reset the kernel. The reset kernel is also at the runtime there. You can ask to restart and start afresh. Okay, or you can clear all the clear all the data and rerun. Okay, so you all this you can do runtime. 
Um, so just some preliminary introduction on what we're trying to do here. So the data set that I've given to you is in color, but in the code, we will strip off the color. Okay. Now in the, in the normal uh, JPEG file, okay, uh, a JPEG with Im image, the, the JPEG of image has uh, three layers. So there's RGB, red, green, and blue. Okay. Uh, so this, this is the common format for storing photographs. But uh, this format is not su suitable for our application. So let's see what we're trying to do here. See, we're given a plan, why? We want to predict, so we, we can think of this as a prediction or a classification problem. We are given a pixel that is gray, grayscale, black and white is grayscale. We're given a grayscale pixel. We want to know what is the color of the pixel. So it's, a, it's to either to classify or to predict the pixel value. Now, if, uh, so if you have to predict the RGB is a bit more difficult because we predict three, three, three colors, right? And we, we don't have a grayscale, uh, it's, it's a bit harder. And you also imagine that it's not possible to, to, to classify a pixel to its RGB values if we have no information about the pixel, right? There's no, no way. So before we actually want to convert the RGB image into a different format. So the format, there are a different color space. There are a variety of color spaces that we can have. The colors, the color space um, apart from R RGB. So we have uh, LAB, L, A star, B star, uh, Y, U, V, or Y, B, R, and so on. There are a lot different type of color spaces. So one type of color space that is that's suitable is that instead of RGB channel, we have one channel that is luminance. So the luminance basically means black and white. Okay? So if you have one channel which is black and white, the other two channels, U and V, in this case, we're using Y, U, V. You are using Y, to predict U and V values. So given the Y value, we want to predict U and V. So once you have this Y, U, V layers, then we have a full color, have a full color picture or full color image, okay? So that, that's what we're trying to do. So given the RGB value, first we convert it into Y, U, V. Uh, then, uh, then we run through the network. The network will produce, will predict what the U and V is, okay? Of course, the network cannot predict what you and we without any context, okay? So we, we go through a model uh, that is called the encoder and decoder, okay? Encoder and decoder. So you can see on the image here, there are blocks, okay? There are blocks. This block, so the first image goes to the block and goes to a smaller block, so smaller block and smaller block. So what's happening is that this is, this first section here is called the encoder. It's actually squeezing the picture from the full scale picture, maybe two by six, two by six, squeeze it down to 64 to 60, 64 by 64. It's squeezing it down. So, and then at the later part, it's expanding it out. So squeezing it down is called the encoder, expanding it out is called the decoder. So what it's trying to do is actually to uh, string now, okay? If you can see this image here, this is why there's a sky, there's a trees and there's a ground. So it's trying to squeeze it to only the essential uh, part. So it's not probably going to squeeze it into, into three sections, sky, trees, and ground. Okay. So that three, three crucial information can be squeezed down into a smaller block. We, we don't need a full size Im image. So, so we only squeeze it down to what is, what is the relevant uh, part of the image. So maybe that, that's three, three, three features, sky, trees, and ground. Okay. And then once we have that, image we we expand it back up to the full scale. Actually, I, this is just a very rough description of it, okay? The very rough de description. So we encode it and then we decode it back. Uh, this, 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 then once we decode it back, at the same time, we use information from, uh, from the previous layer to color to inform what the pixel color is okay so it's it's a bit iffy like, okay my explanation but uh so just take this as it is first okay 
So, um, so this is a basic encoder decoder network. Okay, so let's uh, run the code. Okay, let's run the code. So, so this is the first block of code, the first cell. So if you could just uh, click or or just type control enter. Okay, then when you when you click this, you should see it should it should go without error, and you should see. Uh, the version okay. Hopefully, the version is two point two la, as same as mine. So can I just um, can I just get uh, you all to run this first cell? Okay. So there's a question, how do I know the run is completed? That's, a, that's the first cell only, okay? Don't, don't run everything yet, so, so that we are pretty much in sync. I cannot see all the chat anyway. Uh, so, uh, how do you know it will complete? It will print out, it will print out as you can see, 2.20 RC, right? Okay, I'll turn the H. Where is it? So uh, Marina's version is RC4. It doesn't matter. Two, as long as you can see 2.2 is okay. 2.2.0 okay. dash RC4. Yeah. This is uh, it, what mine is showing. It's really, it's a, it's slightly, it's a slightly newer version. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay. Some say yours. Yeah, the, everybody should have RC4 because this was last, done last week, so it doesn't matter. Where do you see the version? You see it after you click the cell. This uh, after you click this cell, this one. You click this cell. The, um, the chat and screen share cannot appear at the same time. Mm, seems like. Yeah, it's, for I you think cannot, but but you can you can leave the chat open and you can still screen share, I believe. Okay, mm. Can you need to put it on the full screen mode, I think. Full screen mode, okay. It's in the full screen mode. <laughs> this is not full screen mode. Man. You press escape, see whether you see the controls. Escape. No, Mac only have escape. Uh, really? Yeah, I okay, can, can see, can see, can see. Okay. Can see, yeah, uh, all right. <laughs> okay, so, so before you can run the next step, which is to upload the file, you must have uh, downloaded the link uh, from here. Landscape data. Have you downloaded to your own local drive? So landscape data. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you have done that, okay, you unzip it. Oh no, don't need to unzip it. Just keep it zipped. So now just click this, uh, click this run, and then it will it will create a browse button. So click the run before the run is finished it will create a browse button. So use the browse button to upload that zip and then press OK or something and then it will, it will upload. So upload the data set zip? Yeah, okay. upload the data set zip. Better there are two monitors, I don't have two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, data set zip. Yep, data set zip. Later, we'll do the test if, when we finish the training. Okay, so once you're uploaded, you go to the next cell where you see the import the zip file there, okay? 
import zip file, you run this one, and it should print out, it should print out a list of images there, and you should also be able to see on this on this side here, on the file side, there's a folder name. Okay. Yep, so after you have saved it to that, run the next one, which is to unzip it. Unzip it into your collab workspace online. So you should be able to see uh, a list of files So everybody okay so far? So, uh, so you just run the next cell uh, if you have already unzipped the thing. This is to list the files, the, to get the collection of files. Then, then the next cell would be to display. So you should be able to display a sample image. Okay, you should, so the next two cells, you run that, you should be able to display a sample image. If you, don't see a sample image means you have uploaded it incorrectly. Okay, so then it's just very easy. The next few run, just just run the next. So the next cell here is uh, the function called process image. This function uh, just convert the RGB to YUV. Okay, so that we are preparing it to be used for training. So just run this two cell. So it's. It's preparing this uh, data for training. So actually what is happening is that so converting RGB to YUV, then it is uh, given, split into two, two images, X and Y. Okay, 
So the X is the grayscale image, which is the black and white image. The Y is the two other channel, U and V channel. Okay, this U and V channel is stripped off. So what we we are we are what we're doing do is that we're gonna feed the X and Y. So X is one channel, Y is two channel. We're gonna feed the X and Y for training. So what do we mean by training? This is this is a supervised training, okay? So this is a supervised training. What we mean is that we we want the the algorithm or the model to learn to associate the x values with the two two y values. Okay. Uh, so and and we have the we and and we have the actual y values given together with the x values. So the x value comes with the actual y values. But we want we want to teach the program to come up with its own y values. And we want to tell the program how close your predicted y value is with the actual y values. That's why we are feeding in the actual y values and we will compare the y predicted values with the actual y values. So in the training, we in this case, the supervised training, we will always have the actual values versus the values that is being predicted by the code. And we want to compare it. So the, the, whole, the whole algorithm works in this way. Um, given the predicted values, given the predicted y values, compare with the actual y values that, that we want. Okay, adjust, adjust your results until the two, the predicted and actual y values are as close as possible. So we have to loop the training, given the predicted y value versus the actual, loop it until the predicted y value is as close to the actual y value as we can. So therefore, when we do the training, we, we, we want to give the actual values so that the code or the model can learn how good its prediction is with the actual values, okay? So, so that's, why, that's what we are doing in processing this data, okay? So, Okay, so so we have prepared, we have we ha we have uh, prepared the training data. We will feed it to the model for training. So in this exercise, I have prepared two models. Okay, model one and model two. So this model. Is, is the actual uh, portion of the code. This is the core portion of the, of the code that actually learns, okay? So this, is, this model is actually the, the neural network model or the deep learning model. So this deep learning model has weights uh, or has parameters, okay? Has parameters that you, that you adjust automatically based on a loss function. So the loss function is how, how different your y value, the predicted y value with the actual y value. So you will adjust based on this difference until the y difference becomes closer and closer and closer, okay? So how does it become closer and closer? You run the training loop multiple number of times. This, now, this multiple number of times is called the epochs. So you can have, if you run it, if you have epoch equals one, you run through the training data one time, okay? It doesn't have a, it, it doesn't have a chance, it will, it will, it doesn't have a chance. You you won't have a. If you run it two times, then you then you will you have adjusted the, the weights, and then you can see the 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 loss in the second epoch as at the start of the second epoch. Okay, so as you run more and more epochs or more more and more loops of the entire set, the 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 loss or the predicted value should be as close as possible. Okay, so if the the the, the predicted value 
or the loss continually increase, that means you have overtrained. That means to say that the, the model is no longer working effectively. The loss should be smaller and smaller. That means the Y values predicted should be as close as close until it's close. Okay. At some point, you will go back up because you have overtrained the model. Okay. So, so there are two models here. You can, you can pick one or two of the models. The first model is the basic encoder decoder. The second model is the basic encoder decoder model with extra two layers called the dense lake layers. Okay. So this is the another additional neural network added on to this model. Okay. So it's just, it's just an extension. So you, you are free to pick either one. So the simpler one is model one. The model two is a slightly more complicated one. So uh, you select one of the other. Okay. So you select one of you, you select one or the other to run first. You run one first, then you can run the second one later, the next one, okay? Uh, if you try to click, if you try to run model one, then click model two, model two will supersede the model one because it's reconfigured itself to be more model two, okay? Uh, so so you, if you click model one already, don't click model two. If you click model two, don't click model one. If you click model one followed by model two, that means you are just running model two, okay? But because of model two, will, you click model one, then model two, model two will supersede model one, okay? So uh, once you click that, you can click on the model summary. This is just a recap of the model architecture. So you just tell you that um, which model you have already fit fed into this code, line, okay? So it tell you that, um, convolution 2D, 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 how many layers? So each of these lines is a layer in the neural network. So each of these lines in the layer corresponding to one of these blocks here. Okay, one of these blocks here. So that 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 layer, see cough 2D, convolution 2D, or up sample, one line of code there, the one line of the code gonna add correspond to one block of one block in this picture. Okay, of course this, this picture is not the exact uh, exact representation of the cola I just uh, give you an idea okay so all of this ad is one block in the image okay so um, so once you you have run you have run this pick the more one of the model you want click on the summary so this each of this line here should correspond to the ad there okay you you can check it out later um, but it should correspond to, to each of the line, each of the add line there, each of this line in this uh, in this diagram correspond to one line in the add in the code above or in the in a block in the picture above. Okay, so you have done that. Then comes fitting the model. Okay, so this is actually training. So we are trying to improve its prediction over multiple rounds. So if we pick the epochs to be 30, it's going to run through the data. 30 times, okay? So you can also see the loss. The loss continually drop. Lah. If we stop if we stop dropping, so you can see the loss at the start. Usually the first step, the loss is very big. Lah. It can be much bigger than this. So if you just look at the second epoch, 0 0.0091, it will drop down to 0 0.0085, okay? If you increase it to 50 epochs, it might still drop, okay? But you should, if it, if it doesn't adopt, it remains stable or increases, then you should stop. Okay, you shouldn't go beyond that number of epochs. Okay, so, uh, mm -hmm. so you can... Dr. Look, can yeah. you explain what is loss here? Uh, so the loss is the difference between the predicted value against the actual value. Okay. So the smaller the loss, the closer the actual value, sorry, the closer the predicted value uh, Mm -hmm. to the actual value. The predicted value and the, the actual value is very close. Okay. So the first time it's... Um, because it the doesn't... The first time it's large. It, the first then, time it's large because the weights, it hasn't been trained yet. So the weights are, are random. So the result mm -hmm. will be the loss. The, the difference will be huge because you mm -hmm. haven't fed in the data yet. Mm -hmm. No, sorry. You haven't adjusted the, the, the parameters to fit the data yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so it, yeah. 
Mm. It's one epoch and uh, one iteration? Iteration of the entire data set. So there are many types of loss. Okay, this loss uh, that we use, actually is, the loss is the crucial element. Apart from the architecture, the loss itself is a crucial part of, the, of this uh, type of uh, architecture. So the loss that we use here is actually the mean square error only. It's a very simple loss. But in other cases, you have to craft the loss so that it learns the right thing. If you, if you make the, if you, the loss is wrong or incorrect, you will learn the wrong thing because the only thing is learning is try to minimize the loss. Okay. So, so you can set the epoch, right? If you, you just, if you just click inside that cell, you can change 30 to 40 or whatever. So you, you may just, just leave it to 30 first. Okay. Later you have another, once you see the result, you can go back and change the epochs to whatever you want, okay? So once you've finished the training, you see you set the epoch to 30, you run it. Okay, there's an option to save the model uh, so that you, you don't need to redo the training. So I've commented this out, so we, we're not gonna do this. So uh, you can save the model itself so that you can run it off without doing the training again. So if you don't save it every time, you have a new data that you wanna test, you have to do the training again, okay? So we're gonna skip that. So now, if you perform the, the training, oh, okay, there's a question. Let me just answer the chat thing first, okay. Um, if we have question about the last, uh, the previous step about okay. uh, if we are using our own data set and there are differences in the loss, should we ask you now or later? You can ask me now. The, the, the losses should be different. Will, everyone should have a different loss. Okay. So one case is um, where the second epoch has loss of 8,000. <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which, which, which epoch? 8,000? Yeah, second. Two the of third 30. Did, did it reduce? Yes. The third one is 2.2 .2, and then the fourth one is 0 0.06. Yeah, it's okay. Just let, as long as it's reduced, it's okay. Okay. And then the second scenario is um, it doesn't change after like three or four up to... 10, it's, it remains at 0 0.003. Yeah, just, just cut, cut it off there, don't, don't train more than that. Okay.
31 participants. Okay, so uh, training done, training done, then you can upload. Same thing, upload the test set and then unzip it again. So just run through all the final cells and you should have something like this. Okay, as a result. You can compare the actual colorful images versus the one that's predicted now, okay? So, and uh, you can comment on the on the prediction. You can share screen if you have your own data set. Uh, you can also rerun this with more epochs. You can run model two. I think the model two does a slightly better job. So you can go and rerun model two, increase the epoch to 80. That's what I found out, okay. For, for this set, actually the Epoch 80 is not crucial, but if you try the, the fire extinguisher, uh, you need the... Needs a higher Epoch, okay? It's harder to train the part. Also, you notice that the colors are a bit dull, okay? So, this seems to be the case with this. Without further improvement, it's a bit muted the color is not as bright and as colorful it has to also has something to do with the with the with the loss function okay the way that we calculate the loss function if you use a more diverse data set not the ones that I have given to you um, the results that you may get you can share and see and show us now, okay? So it will it will not be so good if your data set is more diverse. In the landscape data set that I've given you, I've, um, the images are all very similar. So in the sense that the the model or the neural network has is able to learn and associate that, you know, the top half is the sky, the bottom half is ground. So the top half, maybe we should have it a little bit bluer the, the lower part a bit greener or you know something like that so yes basically able to learn to associate this if you try to give it a more complex training set it will have a hard time to learn because first your date your images are not enough for you to generalize second the model is not complicated enough complex enough to store all these variations in its weights okay So, uh, if uh, anybody has uh, completed, maybe we can have a look at the screen. Has anyone else completed this and then want to share their result? Okay, Elena has a warning. I also have a warning. Yeah, all of them will have warning. Just ignore it. Because I did not cast it to integer first before they do the conversion. Mm -hmm. uh, 
if they want to share their screen, I think they just click on their share screen, right? Can someone yeah. try and see if it works? So I have to, I have to unshare this first one, I think. I have to unshare myself first. Okay. okay. Yeah, who's this? Alina. Alina. So it's it's exactly the same, right? I think. Mm -hmm. So you you can also bring up the folder on your on your local disk and compare the actual with the ones that is predicted by the program. You not not on the not on the online drive, but your own local drive, maybe. So okay. do you think it's done a fairly reasonable job? <laughs> I never seen the file locally, so let me see first. Yeah, you go and open your local file. Uh, this is landscape, right? <laughs> it's data set. It's maybe in your download folder. Right. Yeah. You can train it a bit longer also and see it'll be a slightly more colorful. So the longer we train, the better color intensity we are we are no 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 this this one this this code has already reached the, the limit. It won't train longer, it'll be it'll be better. Uh, is this the one that you're talking about? Oh yeah, this actually is so much more colorful. Yeah. It's, so this is the one now. Uh, yeah, this is the actual right thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's so much more colorful. So this is a basic li limitation. Uh, yeah. Uh, so how to break the limit? <laughs> you have to um. You have to change the 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 coding a lot more. You have to change the coding. coding. Mm. Not increasing the epoch but coding mm. coding yeah one it's the 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 limitation of this model uh, uh they are not so colorful okay uh it's it's um it's a known problem uh, they are, they are, so you can maybe post process it you know post process uh, but if you if you keep in contact with me uh, i will i'm still Working on it a little bit on how to improve the the color saturation. So one thing is we can just boost the saturation artificially uh, as post processing. Uh, not, nothing to do with the training. The other one when is you, to yeah. When you say code, is it this part? Yeah, this that, is a, this is a model that, that need yeah. to enhance that. Yeah, need right. To Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is like <laughs> don't understand. I don't understand this code at all. But yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, but if you maybe if you keep in contact on Facebook or whatever, I may I may post up better results. Um, you know, in a week or so, I will. I'm also curious uh, on how to actually improve on it. This in a very simple way, like, not to go through overboard because there are others that hundreds of layers uh, that they have. Okay, so probably we don't need that. But yeah. Ah, okay. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. The, the other thing is that if you 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 change the the model, I can I can show you also. I tried um, I, I, you can get a more colorful output also if you change uh, a different color color space model. Okay, let, let me just show you. Is it this one? Is it more colorful? Okay, as compared to slightly more colorful. Slightly, slightly only, and not much. Long time disconnected.
So, Dr. Loeb, how come uh, faces won't work? Yeah, I'll show you. Because it's not able to learn this, I'll show you. I also have done the faces. Uh, Christy is asking if the number of samples affect the performance. Of course, of course, of course. See, yeah, these are the phases I've done as well. Mm -hmm. they, uh, looks slightly better than yours, uh, I think. Yeah, looks a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> so, because, because, why? Okay, so the simple fix is just to are uh, the skin, before I go there, is the skin tone more or less accurate, you think? Is that a skin tone? I can't see the color. Well, because? it makes everybody look same skin tone. <laughs> 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 so the first thing is that it, it cannot know the color of the dress. It doesn't know the color of the flag, right? Yeah. 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 And Okay, so all this has have to do with the training set. The, 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 the. So, in order to do this, I have to, for the training, I have to select all the portrait to be more or less similar, okay? More or less similar. So, look, they're all very similar. I reject all those, so you can see they're all face frontal straight, straight out ahead. So that it knows, it knows roughly where the face is. The face is always somewhere in the center. So in this small data set and this small network, it is only capable of learning that only. It's not capable of learning more, all right? So if you have your faces in a more diverse pose, so uh, they're not right in the center, some left, some right, some turn here, turn there. Your, your data is not big enough for it to learn, to generalize. Your neural network is not, does not have enough parameters enough to index all those a variation in the post. Okay, so the, so end up is not able to put the color where it's supposed to be. So so that's my explanation. So with, without even worrying about the actual algorithm, there's not enough data for it to generalize. Okay, and there is not enough parameters in the small ne neural network. If you look at the, the neural network they have is I don't know ten plus ten plus la layers on it. It's not enough to store all this. Right, so I, is that sort of give you an understanding of the limitations? Mm, yep. Christy said it seems to detect well on the hair color. <laughs> <laughs> it's black and white. It, 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 it didn't give any color. Did, did it give any color? Some are blonde. It didn't give it a blonde color. So if you wanted to color this flag here, so presumably you have your training data must have multiple images of this flag somewhere, then it will probably learn. Or you can go and collect a data set or all just flags only in various position. Just only flags for this simple network, right? If you have a network that's a few hundred layers, then, okay, a portion of the network can specialize for flags, specialize for cars, specialize for that, this and that. So then it, then you can do it, but for this, you cannot. So therefore, you have to limit the data set to particular set of type of images. So you can also go and you 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 try to see this uh, this uh, this uh, fire extinguisher, right? So I've got this this fire extinguisher. So it's supposed to be very red, but at least it has got some of the red. Red tones here, okay. So this is the fire extinguisher. So every one of them should read slightly late, but it's still very mute, muted. Now. Of course, the actual rate is very bright. You can see it's very bright, but it, it's not able to give you a, a bright, deep bright rate. Okay. And this is this is the one that 
everything is red, reddish instead of the fire extinguisher. And then you can see this is the one that has failed. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like some imagination. You can see in the background, right? It's you can see that it's it's like trying hard but failed. <laughs> yeah, shadow of the all the training uh, fire extinguisher inside. Trying it's trying to fit it inside, right? So right. yeah, so that's what it's trying to do. So uh, this one also it, it, it fitted the sky, but the the, the you know the rest are fitted wrongly, la. Okay, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> yeah, but interesting art, you know. Yeah. Okay. Swimming is here too. <laughs> Swimming okay. been here a long time. Uh. Oh, it's, he left and came back. I only realized when he mentioned acid. <laughs> oh, sorry. Maybe we shouldn't say this. <laughs> acid? acid? <laughs> yeah. Got yeah, your yeah. attention? Got your attention? Yeah. <laughs> okay, patient also had a question um, about how many data points minimum do we need for the training set? So when you talk about data points, are you talking about the number of pictures or what? Pictures, in this case, the pictures. So we are talking about at least 100 to start with? Minimal, yeah, the more the merrier. Okay. Mm. Yeah. For the training part. Mm. Okay. And also try to keep it within the same style, you know, unless your network is very same big. Genre. Same genre. Same genre, yeah. Unless your network is very big, then you can do it. So, yeah. So, so this is the, the intuition, you know, how to work around with limited data, limited power, limited uh, computing power, and uh, your limited mo model. So, so does anyone else have uh, vastly different results that they want to share? My model one doesn't look too great. So I'm going to try model two. Yeah. <laughs> Black and white for...
So, okay, um, have you, has anybody else done any other results that I can share if they have their own data set? Yeah, yeah. so uh, Maisie asked, uh, how do you check accuracy? Okay, yeah, this, this is an issue itself, yeah. So, so one way to check the accuracy is actually the loss function, the, the loss numbers that you see when you're doing your training. But unfortunately, this loss value is not a good number. Okay, it's a, it's a mathematical formula that some, it's calculating the difference in the pixel value, but it's not a good uh, perceptual, it does not correspond to our perception. Even though the loss is very small, very low, it does not correspond to how we perceive it, right? So it is a mathematical calculation, but it does not correspond to our per perception. So this is re really a big issue on, on all images type of uh, programs where you try to evaluate against our perception. So because our perception of colors are not are non-linear and, and also we have some uh, we have also some uh, preconceived notion uh, of what object's color should be. So there is no objective or no computational way to calculate this accuracy. So in, in most of the research, they get around this by asking people to make the judgment. Right? So they scale it on 1 to 10 or, or whatever. So they get 20 people to view the results and then ask them to score. how how close, you know, this color is as you expect, as you expect. So they, they will require people or human to make the scoring itself. The computer scores are not good because our, percept our perceptual uh, sense is not the same as what we can calculate from the numbers. So we, they use people to make the judgment. Okay, so that's generally how we do it now, okay? So whether you like it or not, whether you think this is a natural color or not, so we use human judgment to make this. So doing a survey of some sort now, okay? So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, uh, Peishan. Yeah. As you will have to realize that the the pixel itself cannot tell you what the color, right? You, if I give you a pixel with the grayscale value, I ask you uh, what color it is, you will not be able to. So this pixel must be placed in a context, must be placed within a spatial region of the image. And with that spatial region, then we can have a we can have a guess right an estimate of what that color is if we know where where it is placed okay so i think uh in the model that we have here for the landscape at least the the model has learned to associate that the pixel at a certain position in the image would most likely to have this color and that color right um e yes so in a sense that uh if the pixel is near the top, it might most likely be blue, be a bottom most likely to be green or brown, you know, those, those, type, those type of things, yeah. So, uh, ideally, yeah, as you say, patient, the, ideally you should be able to segment out. So that's the next goal, okay? We, we should be, that's the, the most of the version of this coloring. We should be able to segment first and then decide what color to place. 
on the segmentation. So, uh, yeah, I I believe that that would be the case. Uh, but segmentation is a very expensive process. Uh, so we do in this model that we do, we are doing a sort of a pseudo segmentation, uh, not a very accurate one. All right. Um, it is mostly, I believe, it's just looking at at, at position. Uh, okay, at the very top left, bottom right, or whatever, then give the color. I and plus, plus some other things are that uh, we need to 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 test and see. Okay, we because from from the coding and from mathematics itself, well, actually we cannot determine what exactly what it is doing. So we we'll need to be able to look at the look at the internal network itself and see. Uh, how it is segmenting, how it is segmenting, it's segmenting in a way, but it may not be segmenting in the right way. Okay, it's segmenting based on the images that you give it, but it may not be segmenting based on what our human notion of object segmentation is. Okay, so all the segmentation is, 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 uh, so the segmentation, the, the, the segmentation is based on the image that you fit. Okay. Okay, so uh, maybe there's a suggestion now, okay, so to go through the code a little bit now, okay, so let me just see, uh, let's go back to there, the code. You need to, uh, yeah, sharing your screen. Yeah, so um, it's a bit it's a bit tougher to explain this, but yeah. So but let's have a look at it at a high 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 level. It's uh, um, so as I mentioned uh, each of these add lines is adding one layer to the new to the neural network. Okay, adding one layer. So the layer is called a convolution. So this is convolution to the so you can see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of this convolution or ten or more. Okay. So as uh, we talked about it earlier, each of this convolution layer is equal to a block in this diagram here. A block in this diagram here. Right? A block in this diagram. The width, you see you can see the, the width of this block, the image itself is is uh become half, 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 and half. Okay, as we go, I'll explain that a little bit. And then each of these blocks has a depth, right? Or, or the length, uh, we call it depth, uh, but it looks like it's some, it's actually it's depth, uh, okay? Maybe quite length, but it's a depth, okay? So this, so okay, so this depth, this depth is cost, is, is uh, set by this number, 64, okay, 64. So 64, 1, 2, 8, 2, 5, 6. So it's becoming deeper and deeper. Okay. So for example, if you look at this image, so this one may be this, this tab here. So the H and W is the width, which is the square square shape. This the third dimension is the depth, which is 64. If it's 64, and then it jumps up to 1, 2, 8. Maybe it is 1, 2, 8. And then 1, 2, 8 jump to 2, 5, 6. Okay. So so it's like having more and more channels, okay? So your original image input is just only one channel. So the depth is one. But as we go along, we add more and more, it becomes deeper. 64, uh, 1, 2, 8, 2, 5, 6, it becomes deeper. So the reason is that we, we use these different channels to store different aspects of the image. So we're sort of segmenting out into different channels. For example, maybe the, 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 the trees portion are stored in one channel, the, the, the cloud are stored in another channel. So they split it out, they split out the, that one image into these multiple channels. Okay. And then sub, at the same time, we we make it smaller. We, we, we shrink the image. So this shrinking the image is caused by the strike and caused by the convolution itself. So every time there's a strike equals to two, the image shrinks by half. Okay, so all these shrinks by half. At the same time, the depth increases, but after a certain level, I mean, these are arbitrary, okay, more or less arbitrary. So you, so you can do this by experimentation as long as they fit into this, uh, they are like a Lego set as long as they fit into, okay. 
so so they all three by three. Uh, this is a bit uh, without any props. A bit hard to explain. So anyway, so we we string down, we string down, and then once we string down, we upsample it back. So this upsample is to increase back the size. Okay. So we string down here, then we upsample. It goes back to double. So the upsample two by two comma two is to double the size. Double the size, double the size, back to this original one to eight by one to eight. Okay. So go by original one to eight by one to eight. So this convolution 2D are sort of a feature detector. So it's going to scan through the entire image. The scanning is a three by three matrix, scanning all the three, look for common commonalities, okay? commonalities in the image, and then uh, place it into these different channels. So Basically, this is what we're doing. At, at the same time, at the same time, it's learning which features are important. So this scanning, three by three scanning, has weights. So the weights will tell you which feature is important. So it's learning which feature is important based on the feedback from the loss function. Okay, based on the feedback from the loss function. So it is. Um, so if you look at the diagram, what's happening is that you fit in an image. It's going to, it's going to calculate some value. Back here. We're going to calculate this back value here. This value is calculated. We'll compare with the actual, actual colors that you want. So we calculate the loss. This loss is back propagated back here. Okay. This this loss is sent back to the parameters back to all this network here. This parameter, the parameters will now, based on the feedback from the loss, it will adjust the way so that the next round the image is spread forward again. Hopefully that the loss will be less. Okay. So that's. The, the basic explanation now, okay? And the hope is that when we string down this to this small size, we only capture the in, important parts of the image. So this image may be very big, but when you string down to 32 by 32, we will, we, will, we will basically have a simplified image of this original picture. And this simplified image of this picture will hopefully be the parts of the image where it requires different colors. Yeah. And this, uh, so, so in this model too, I've added another two layers here. These two layers is a normal neural network. Uh, it's a multi-layer perceptron. So uh, this sort of increases the, the prediction level of the original model before it. Okay, so, and we have this, um, we have this, then after that, we will do the training now, because the training is just done by simple motion config. Okay, so what happens is that with this type of coding, it's very easy, very easy to extend the model. As if you have some idea of what you're doing, you can extend this model by increasing the add here, add more and more layers, okay? So it's sort of fairly easy to play around. It's like a Lego set that you can plug in. Uh, as long as the numbers match, uh, then maybe, yeah. Uh, if, as long as you match so that they can fit into each other nicely, then you can continue to add on. Um, there are so many things that you can try on. Uh, so if you are interested to to try on or to can continue at this conceptual level, uh, okay? You can contact me if you keep a connection with me. Maybe we can uh, continue this discussion offline, uh, I guess, right? Uh, al alternatively, yeah, al alternatively, Uh, wait, somebody say you have a data set. Can you just share? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Is this better? Doesn't look like it's much better. So, 
for this kind of training, I guess you have to train one segment of the fruit first and then the outer fruit in a separate training. Would that help? No, because you will not be able to you will not be able to merge it together. Once you once you train it separately, separately cannot the, merge. The second training will all right, the one you have to train it together. So okay. You have, you have to train it together with sufficient enough with, with sufficient uh, so maybe like 100 cross section and 100 images of the whole fruit, something like that. If you, if you train yeah. cross section, then your test data must be cross section. You, you, cannot, you, cannot, you cannot section it out already for the, for the algorithm. It doesn't know that you're, you're, you're separating out. It's actually quite dumb, right? So you must give in what you want to test. If you're testing it already segment section out already, then you then you train with a section out. You must train with whatever what you want to test. You cannot perform, you, you cannot cut out the fruit for it to and tell that it is inside the fruit. This other, you, there's no way to tell that, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have to train whatever you want to expect, you must put it in the training data. So here's the thing, the, 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 the coding or the model cannot anticipate, huh? there's no way of knowing. The only way it knows is what you give it in the training. Right? So whatever you give in the training must be the same as what you do in the test. It cannot be something else. There's no way you will know. So it's very dumb in that sense. It's just picking up common common uh, things from the, train, from, the, from the training set. There's no way you, you will know. Right? There's no way you, you will know. Will it confuse the training if I have two types that I want it to train together? So so the, the yeah so if you have you have two different type of images you should have more uh, so that it will learn okay or else you have to have more you have to have more training set your, your images must be much more you cannot be 20 or 30 there's no way to learn. yeah you have to have much more and then you should increase the complexity of your neural network okay so okay. so so you should be able to compensate now uh, so uh more complex images require more complex neural network, okay? So that's, that's how it goes. Uh. So that's, that's the limitation of it. Uh. So, so that's why we have lots of it. We have, uh, you know, some of this. First of all, we're dealing with small images, one to it by one to it. Uh, and our network is only about, it's less than 20 layers. People are dealing with a few hundred layers, up to a thousand la layers, right? So, so that's the limitation. Uh. So we, we can only expect this to be a toy model. Uh. But we can strive to have a toy model work as well as possible uh, for whatever data set that you want, for a simple data set. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Be before we upgrade ourselves to a 1,000 layer model, okay, we, we work with a smaller one, learn and understand its limitations before we add on. Yeah. So, so in this, Session, I think we just want to tell you that the, the, the data set that you give it is just as important as the model that you, you coded. So these two things work hand in hand, right? So having said that, so I, I want to, I have a query, okay? So uh, maybe I want to run this as, okay, we can run this this kind of workshop, one hour kind of workshop, just to run. So we can run this to, to experience some of these models. Uh, so you can do, for example, you can do coloring, you can, you can make your art look like, you can make a photo look like art, you know, those kind of things, or you can do object detection. So at this kind of session, we, we can run it multiple times over one or two months. Okay, we can run this session. Okay, but at this, this type of session, we can only do so much. Uh, so it's just, uh, we can only we'll have a have a taste of what the deep learning is all about without really learning it in in detail enough, lah, Okay, so so we can so there are pe people de people different people have have different needs, lah, So it's okay. So if people just want to have a uh, you know just a one hour session to get a taste or run the code to see what is it in an easy manner way without doing too much setup. Okay, we can continue to doing this kind of sessions. Fine, not a problem. Uh, but I just wonder if there are people, uh, 
if there are people interested in more a more detailed session a real detail session yeah uh, uh, so a detailed session enough to work on some actual coding uh, some some details on actually what does convolution work means so convolution 2d what does it actually do how is this actually affecting so i wonder if there are people who are more interested in a more detailed manner la. so i don't know just uh okay of course um yes you have people in more detailed manner but i probably cannot be running this for free now okay so i'm wondering if uh, there are people who are really looking into detail and maybe willing to pay have a pay session uh, okay that runs one or two days uh, so we're going to run through variety of models here and some coding and some actual details on it so we can start from the actual neural network from scratch uh. so and this is actually the class that i taught in the in the university so we taught this in the university over a few weeks as a part, part of the university program for ai uh. so i'm going to I probably i can extend this deep learning portion okay uh, to fill up two days in detail uh. so so uh so i'm trying to sell you a paid course uh, if you're interested and how much you are willing to pay for it uh, maybe you can give me an idea uh this and see whether it is possible to run just a small group uh, i guess i don't think you're going to need a big group uh. so if will you be running it online since we are still having the MCO, right? <laughs> yeah, it's been extended <laughs> another month. <laughs> the MCO. We can run it online for a small number, a handful of people, like they're willing to pay, okay, a little bit, okay. I don't know, I don't know what amount that you're willing to pay for a little bit to run this, okay. Uh, Maybe so, we can feedback in the form. Yeah, my form doesn't have that feedback inside. Oh, okay. So, so I, I just, so you just leave your, email behind for me and then i will i will email you and contact you and see back like if you are interested yeah okay. or, or you can con contact me yeah so there are some questions and some comments yeah you can have a look patient do you want to share your results <laughs> you share your screen sorry i put you on the spot i i will I actually share <laughs> The syllabus, uh, you leave your email behind for me uh, in the form there, leave your email behind. I will show you the syllabus and see whether you have any interest now. So we will go through the little maths, we will go through the actual uh, neural network from scratch. Uh. Oh, this looks pretty good. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I actually trained model one for over 100, 150, oh. 150 oh, okay. actually. And then I got green color. I got green color finally. But model wow. two, model two actually stagnant at about. Stagnant is it? Yeah, stagnant at about sixty plus. It's only stopping at loss function of zero point zero. Wow. 0. Okay, this is good. Yeah. Yeah, good. because yeah, my my loss function got reduced to exponentially. Wow. Zero four. Zero 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 four, which is very good. Yeah. But, but I, you, you tested 20 only? You said 120? No, I tested over 120, but I tried every 60 it, it pop. Oh, I see, I see. So when I, when I see the, the number is still dropping, then I will try for another Hey, that's very good. That's why we need people like you to do all this. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, we have to understand more behind the neuro, uh, uh, neural network. Lab. Yeah, you can saw, join me yeah. in the in the course uh, next time. Or oh, I will have another session. But we will not be able to go through the maths in this kind of session. Uh, we only can go through running the code and stuff like that. Uh, but it's good to have feedback and have multiple people running these multiple things. So at least we share. And now, because I've never run it beyond 60 or 80 oh, epochs. Oh. Right? So you, have, you, have, you can run it then. I ran it over 150 plus just now. Yeah. So I've never, I never thought of running because so many things to do. <laughs> so, okay. so I, I think I ran model two for up to hundred, but the results weren't that good. Also, mm. would uh, my, do you have any either uh, why? effect on this? Could it be I have a weaker GPU? No, I think 
model two, model two actually really gets stagnant at sixty. When I try to run at sixty, right, it gets stagnant at zero point zero zero eight six. Then it's it doesn't never improve. Going uh. down the, the long. Yeah, it doesn't improve. I don't know why, eh? Because it's supposed to be improving because you added the dance part, right? But 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 uh, how the results? The the result compare is comparable at with the uh, model one. Definitely, do you have any? Mine is like super black and white, uh. I think I still have mine. Let me have a look. Uh. Okay. Hmm. Well, you can try to run the fire extinguisher as well, maybe. Oh, can? Let me try. The fire extinguisher, maybe, yeah. So we don't need a most of the model. Whoops. It's hard to tell. Uh. So actually all this deep learning at one level is uh, empirical, is experimentation. So in a sense, it's it's not theoretical. It's empirical. It's do trial, yeah. trial and error. Mostly. I have to keep. Yeah, I have to really try with a lot of data set, lah. Yeah, lah. So that's why we have this session so that people can try. <laughs> but um, I didn't run from the beginning. I ran from model two onwards. I don't know if that will affect. No. What do you mean? You run model two, then it's model two. Yeah, I it ran won't... here, and then I. Yeah, this is model two. Did I yeah. do 100? Yes, I did 100. Yeah, this, this model too long. It's stagnant around 0.008. Yeah. yeah and this is the result. This is the normal one, yeah. Okay, so, so model 1 seems to be better. But mm. I tried the model 2 on the fire signature, it seems to be better. Oh. But I've never tried beyond 100 with the box, so that's a thing. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a question, Sukfan, asking yeah. if the is it important to understand the statistics used in deep learning? I I think uh no not really required. It's totally different field. Let let me explain to you. Uh the machine learning community, which is part of this deep learning stuff. This machine learning community come from the computer science people. Computer science people actually don't know statistics. So, so they already made up all this machine learning without using statistics. Because now there is a branch called statistical machine learning, which combines statistics. But originally, the machine learning people do not use statistics at all. They came from a different field. They came from a different idea. So instead of using statistics, they use training uh, training laws, validation laws, and all these things. We, the various statistics uses population and sample size. So you sample from so so they, they don't they don't match, but but uh, but but of course uh, uh, but of course nowadays there's a, a few called statistical machine learning. Uh, so the people from statistics introduce the statistics into machine learning. So they call statistical, uh, yeah. So so they are called statistical machine learning, and so they have a different view of things, and so they combine now. But in in uh, in in deep learning, um, we we use more uh, linear algebra and and, and matrices, uh, Okay. Uh, of course, statistics is always useful. I'm not to say that it's no use, but we do, we don't we we will we will always have it in the background using statistics to understand uh, so it's always useful uh, okay to understand uh, st statistics okay of course of course there is a viewpoint that you can use statistics to understand deep learning as well of course you can do that but um, we can do without it also is possible okay so we are mostly looking at linear algebra uh, again. Again, if you are talking about a course, uh, uh, my, if you're going to teach a course, uh, it, it will not be very math heavy now, okay? So we want to try to understand it, it intuitively more than trying to do the, 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 the mathematics, uh, okay? So more important actually is calculus, uh, calculus and, and vector, vector algebra, vector calculus, yeah? But uh, again, we, we won't be really looking and in that in that derivation and stuff like this, uh, this is probably not useful for a practitioner. Okay, and we are not going to look at proof. So, but we we 
we need to understand calculus because calculus is used as an optimization uh, method. So all this machine learning is a form of optimization. So we need to use mathematical tools to optimize. So, so that is, so we have an intuitive understanding of what the optimization is using calculus. I think that's fair enough already. Yeah. So we try to aim at intuitive understanding rather than mathematical in that understanding. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, uh, so please uh, fill up the form right at the top of the page so that I can capture your email and then I will uh, send you some email if you're interested in future, if there's a course or if there's another free workshop like that in the future. So I'm, uh, I'm thinking maybe we'll do one more now, okay? So uh, this, one, this one, instead of doing coloring, we try to understand what the each layer is. Okay, so it's, for example, you see the convolution 2D is adding the layers and layers. What, what actually is happening at the layer? So maybe, so I'll just run this workshop and then I have a code to show you what those uh, layers are. Now. So those are the activation filters. So what, what, does the, what are those actual filters? Again, on an intuitive sense, yeah? showing you pictures instead of showing you the mess. Okay, so may, maybe we can run that one of those in in two weeks time or something, I uh, have prepared enough. Okay, so. Okay. That sounds great. Yeah. Well, it's. Um, but keep in contact so that I can inform you when it's happening. Mm -hmm. so please fill up the form for me. Okay. Um, so before we finish, is it okay if we take a group photo? How to take group photo? <laughs> Everybody um, enables their video, we'll take a great screenshot. Oh, okay. Oh, I need to do that too. <laughs> so uh, you can wow. see each other's house now. Are <laughs> <laughs> oh, we already at home? <laughs> okay. Um, hang on. I mean, you can predict from the background what type of person you are. Really? So we just screen capture all the pictures and then we run through a prediction algorithm. <laughs> then we know based on the background. Based on your background pic image, we know who you are. Or what's your personality type? <laughs> well, it's good to see everyone. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah. Well, we got only two, four, six, two, four, six, eight, ten. The rest have gone back. Um, some don't have webcam on their computer. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah. Okay, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, please do keep in touch with Dr. Lok and I will let you know when we have the next session ready. You, you okay. taking a screenshot? Thank you. Are you yes, taking a screenshot? I have, yes. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.